Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. So for me, I don't want to use retracements on shorter time frames. I look at it as more of a bigger picture, um, meaning actual period low, and this might, I know it's going to look crazy, but I'm going to take the actual period low and I'm going to move this all the way out to the period high. I've cautioned already on this before and why I didn't put on your chart on a chart. I don't know the period high. And you could probably say, oh, right here, right here, my takeaways. There it is. Well, how about this? Well, is this the high? Is this the high? What's the period low on this chart? Is the question. Is it down here? Yes. But do I draw it from there? So it's for that reason, there's too many questions that I have to answer that I wouldn't put it on AMD. Okay. I hope that makes sense if you want to do it that way because um, you're more familiar with it. Um, great, but try to tell me where the low and the high is on this chart and I'll show you where to put it. <laughs> that's that's kind of the question. Um, let's pick something. I don't know. I don't want to draw it. I don't want to put on something we've already had. Uh, how about something that's been around for a while? Give me something real quick. How about uh, SPY? Because we actually had a question if the Fibonacci tools can be used on uh, ETFs like SPY. Well, as you can see, I already use it. So <laughs> there we go. That answers that question. <laughs> I didn't want to mess with it too much uh, with the defaults. Um, so it's already on there. Um, absolutely. Uh, I, I have noticed on SPY, guys, 78.6 is just a repeating, recurring area of interest. Um, it likes it. I don't know why it, it doesn't care about the 61.8. I don't know specifics of the reasons why I could only speculate. So I don't want to speculate. Um, but as far as what it does there, that, that'd be it. Um, so period low to high. Uh, if you want to do SPY on a Fibonacci um, retracement, you need to know the low or the high to the low. So in this particular case, I'll go ahead and remove this because I really don't need all this on there. Uh, remove drawings. Here we go. Bye. Okay. All right. So if we have a low to a high, oops, high to a low. Okay. Where can it go? There. That's all you'd see. When it gets to the 61.8, you'd be taking profit, okay? And what did it do? It gapped. It just took off. It said, forget it. We're done. Once it goes above the 61.8, like I already said, SPY likes the 78.6. I just see it as a recurring pattern over and over and over and over again. So I'm not saying that you need to be taking profit at 78.6 or set your targets there. You set your own targets, but it generally tends to like to try to test the level. Okay, if history repeats itself. And when it does, you can see it, it's pretty clear. And when it breaks above that zone, you're good to 100, which it did. But right above 100, take any, anybody who was trying to be long is taken out of the trade. Anybody who was trying to be short is taken out of the trade with this candle, long and short. They're all out. Now we get to actually make the move back into this is a pretty clear fan. Can you guys see the fan in your head right now? I hope you can. It's a pretty sharp one. So that's period high that I drew it from right here, which is also the area of the 78.6. It could very easily just keep doing this right along inside this fan. If it fails, this fan, the odds are it's going to try to touch the 78.6 fan right here at some point. At what point? I don't know. Okay. It could be up here. 
it could fail and just drop back down to here. It could fail up here or drop back down to here. But ultimately, I would want to be long if SPY pulled back to 339. That'd be the market at 3390, at least until this fails. And then we have a whole different situation to talk about. Um, but now you can kind of see why I don't do the retracement simply because it sets me target, but it's not really projecting out future. Not for me. Um, if I took this out and put in an extension instead, which is what I prefer, then I can do period high. Actually, we need to go back here because we don't have a defined period high yet. That is be what I would do, just like that. So then we have the, the drop. We have a defined period low. Now, I would be taking profit 61.8, and we did. But again, like I said, SPY tends to like 78.6. And here we go. We're going to fill in this little gap right in here. And then when we break above the 100, we're good. We're still inside the fan. My next target up here. What is that? Uh, I can't see the number. I'm going to move this uh, Zoom thing. There we go. Uh, 388 would be an area of interest uh, for me. And another area of interest for me would be uh, 322. Do I know where it's going to go? Not until it gets there. Just areas of interest. Um, and you can do extensions all inside this if you guys want to. So shorter time frame type stuff, right? Uh, here to here to here. And then you can do here to here to here. And then you have a, whole, have a whole bunch of lines all over your chart. But you can kind of see what's going on right now of uh, this last move from the period low to the first period high to the next period low here, where we had a little tiny pullback, where you got some profit taking right at the 61.8 right in here. Did it pull back fully to the 100? No. It's actually at the 100 from the prior area, this one, the big move, which I'm going to marry the big move. The big move is telling me a lot more than this tiny little move in here. Okay, this is more of a short time frame type stuff. So for that to pull back to that 100 and the 61.8 on the fan could be a potential long. And it was. Made a nice move right back up into this zone again, recurring zones. When you have recurring zones, I draw rectangles. I like rectangles. Repeating zones. Repeating zones. Again and again and again. You'll see it over and over and over again. And there we have. Uh, you can call it confluence, whatever we see it. You have overlapping fibs. I always pay attention to overlapping fib areas. There's another one right here. The color code, however you want. Okay, whatever makes and, sense to you. And uh, John, you have one last question here, and then we'll wrap it up. How do you determine long or short positions based on extensions? based on the extensions and are there any other indicators that are compatible with the Fibonacci drawings? Um, yes, there are a lot of indicators. Um, so we'll do harmonics on another, um, another training session. Um, that's the XABCD pattern, um, Elliott wave theory, uh, mm. It's getting into a little bit more in depth of um, of direction and projection as far as ratios go. Um, if you guys like, um, what is the uh, um, the trading platform that's web based? Trading View, I believe, has yeah. it already built in. It's already color coded, and you can use the harmonics. Uh, from within that. And that's probably what we'll use in the future because uh, Thinkorswim doesn't have the capability uh, to do it as a drawing. Okay, maybe a study or something, you can modify it or, or create something if you if you were you know, technically savvy on programming, but um, it's not a drawing that's available. We're working within the default tools that we're given. Okay, um, so that in consideration, um, what other things would does it work for? As you can see, I drew the Fibonacci on the RSI earlier. 
uh, if you can draw a Fibonacci on it, any indicator, okay, whether it be um, true strength indicator, uh, relative strength indicator, uh, stochastics, whatever you prefer to use, if you can put a Fib on it, uh, period high to period low, it looks like it makes sense to you, then I would use it. It's got to make sense. It, and, and then when you correlate it with the chart above, and it all kind of works in 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 uh, in, uh, in harmony with one another. Um, then use it. If it doesn't, don't. It, Fibonacci is is only a tool to help you get an idea of what might happen at particular price targets, particular periods of time. That's it. It's not support. It's not resistance. It's not an indicator of what you should or should not do. It's a place of interest. Wait till it gets there. See what's going to happen. Be patient. Let the trade develop. Make a decision based on that. Assess your own risk and assess your own reward. So what you can do with Fibonacci is pick a risk to reward ratio that works for you. Mine's five to one for every dollar I'm willing to risk. In other words, buying this candle right here. My risk, if it breaks below, it's a catastrophic failure below this fit fan. This fit fan right here. This is a catastrophic failure below the 100 line, below support, below the 61.8. And we prove all of this. This is a failure. I am stopping out immediately below 317.92. I don't want to be in until we can retake that level and prove that I'm going to be in this trade. But once I can hold this level, okay, so then my target goal would be up here, right? 50 to 61.8, right in here. And guess where it went? There, right in between it. So to take the risk here, to stop out from here, buying in this, you do the math. 324 to stop out at 318 is a $5 risk. Can I make $25 from 324 to 353? Yes. Yes, I can. So it's a five to one risk to reward ratio. This is the trade I take. Does this, I hope this makes sense guys, because this is what I do. It's pass or fail from here. That's it. I don't, I would no interest in being this trade if it breaks down below this line. There's just too many different things telling me that this is, this has to be support or it's not. And later on, after it makes that move that I would hope it had made where I took profit, it comes right back down to it again. This time breaking through the green line, okay? Now I need to wait to see it retake it. A lot of traders will be like, oh, support, buy this. And that's a big risk. You know, I don't know what it's going to do the following day. It does recover. But then if we start to look, now we got a whole period of consolidation here. We start to bounce around here, left to right, up and down, up and down, forming resistance and now forming support. This could go on forever. This could just keep going sideways the whole time until we get all that to the fan. I don't know that until it's done, but I've made my money. It, it hit a target, hit my target, I'm out, that's it. And until it proves otherwise, there's no point in me trying to take it short from here because I don't know if that's gonna be the top or not. So find the setups that work for you. I would use the Fibonacci just to help you plan your targets where you think it can go and make a decision and that's it. And if it works within your five point five to one, risk, you know, if your risk ratio is three to one, whatever you wanna make it, whatever you're comfortable with, on your account, whatever you want to trade, make the decision from there and set your set your limits, but plan your trade in advance. Don't chase anything. It doesn't make any sense to chase anything. If, if you see something running, just leave it alone. There'll be other tickers. You'll find them, I promise. Go chart, 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 chart. Get ready. Look at the fundamentals, look at news, figure out what you want to do, and you'll be a profitable and successful trader. And John, just wanted to say once again, thank you. Uh, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to present this lesson. And I am sure that a lot of people are going to be looking to review this lesson. So again, really do appreciate all the support. And if you guys haven't already done it, just make sure you guys like, subscribe, and also join our Discord group. We'll be doing some more lessons going forward. I know Drados is going to be working on one for support and resistance on some technical indicators. And I know 
John is also going to be doing a lesson on harmonics, so please stay tuned. Take care, guys. Thank you, everyone.